And when he came back, he walked over to see what was in the line, and there was a nest of honeybees in the line. And he reached down and he took out even some honey out of the carcass of that dead lion. Well, one of the things of the Nazarite, you don't touch anything's dead. He done violated his Nazarite vow to God. Amen. Amen. We reach in because something is just a little sweet to us now. We'll touch just a little bit of it. I'm really not going to touch that dead carcass. But friend, if that honey's touching that dead carcass, you touch that dead carcass. Amen. You don't get on. You don't get on to touch things that God said thou shalt not. Amen. Just a little bit of the violation of his Nazarite vow. He went down and took that life. Amen. You know the steps that Samson took. I'm not going through it all. We know that that that, that, that he had that bet with, with the, the 30 men at his wedding feast and he lost it because they plowed with his heifer. Amen. And he had to go out and, and, and kill some people to get to the, the, the changes of garments that was necessary. Amen. We find him all, all of a sudden I'm talking about a man of God I'm talking about a man that had the great strength of God when he shook himself amen God was there it was his accent do you hear me amen he was that accent I'm talking about the power of God amen we find him down at Gaza in bed with a prostitute amen it's alright amen God understands I have needs that's what I hear today amen listen from the homosexual world listen to me you might have a need but God God's got a word from you. Amen. He's got a word for you. Amen. Abstain from all the very appearance of evil. Get away from these things. Amen. Because. Hallelujah. Amen. We found him laying in the lap of the Lyle. And she tormented him and tortured him. What she tried to do? She was wiggling on that. Anybody ever have that action? Amen. We strapped nails in the end of it, trying to split that to hold that, that piece of wood on there. Amen. That axe head would come off, put it back on, try to blow it, try to do anything in the world, put a, a wedge in there, whatever, to hold that axe head on. But the lion was just twisting in his axe head. Amen. The devil knew he had power. Amen. That he had power that he welded. He took the jawbone of an ass and, said, and killed a thousand Philistines. Amen. The devil knew what he was up against. He was up against the anointing of God. Amen. And he was doing whatever is necessary to twist that axe head off. Amen. To get, uh, get him loose from the power of God in his life. Do you hear me tonight? Amen. Satan's out to get you. Satan's out to twist you. Satan's out to take your power and take your anointing. I want to know where your axe head is tonight. Amen. Is this firmly, see it firmly together that you got one whole piece, the salvation of God plus the anointing of the Holy Ghost in your life. Is God doing great things with you? If not, take a look at yourself tonight. Amen. Finally, after the green whiz was broken, after the new ropes was broken, after she tied the beams to the seven locks of his hair, and he picked up the beam and walked off, the torment never stopped. The Satan through her was twisted upon the axe of his anointing. Amen. Trying to tear him down, bring him down, that they may have, have a mockery of our God. Finally, finally. When he poured his heart out to her, she ripped that accent off. She kicked, cut off his hair. Amen. And called and said, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. And the Bible says that he rose up as other times, not knowing that his anointing was gone. And he shook himself. But there was no power there. There was no power. He was a call of God. He was a Nazarite under God. He judged Israel. He was a mighty man of God, but he lost his accent. Amen. When he succumbed to the to the to the to the the wounds of a woman, a man was now to nothing but just to rip his head off, his axe head off, that he didn't have any power with God. Amen. See, one good thing about it. When the Philistines decided that they was going to make sport of this man of God, had no power. They was going to show what their God, their God had done to the Lord God Jehovah. How that they had overcome. They had prevailed. 
The man of God with the power of God no longer had the power of the anointing. His accent was gone. But yet he was still the call of God. He still had the stick. Amen. All he needed was the accent put back on. You hear me tonight? Amen. Some of you need your accent put back on tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Bible says they sent for Samson. As they sent for him, they brought him to this great coliseum that they would make sport with him. And they set him between two main pillars of the building. And he asked this lad to put me here and then just put my hands against these pillars. And the Bible says he bowed down. And what did he do? He prayed a prayer of repentance. Yeah. Amen. And that prayer of repentance said, God, avenge me in my eyes. Amen. Restore to me once again that anointing. Restore to me the power. And the, the Bible says that they didn't know that his hair had grew back out because that hair represented the strength that he had. Amen. They didn't know that God, amen, through a period of time was restoring that hex head. Yeah. Amen. They might have thought they'd cut it off. Amen. But that God was putting it back. Amen. I don't know where they washed it to see how fast it was growing or what. But God know this. Amen. When he bowed and began to pray and said, God, I want my hex head back. Amen. My God, the Bible said he bowed himself. Amen. He prayed that prayer and he gave a great tug and all the building fell down and he killed more that day that day than he killed in his entire life. Amen. Why God restored that accent. I want to know where your accent is tonight. It is the power of God in your life. Amen. If you've been saved, if you've been to the cross of Christ, and you've been saved, you still need that accent. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, Brother Sidney, I got saved and got a dog. No, you didn't. Come on. You've got the ability. You've got the ability to have it all. But all is not manifest. The Bible talks about to pray earnestly for the best gift. If you got it all, what do you tell you to pray for him for? Hey Amen. You don't pray. You just ask him to forgive you. That's the prayer you pray. Amen. For forgiveness that you get the stick. Amen. Then you pray, God, I need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. God sanctify me. Amen. I remember when God sanctified me at part of the church of God, Brother John. I didn't, I didn't get filled with the Holy Ghost that night. Amen. Amen. We don't pray for sanctification no more in the church. Amen. It's a by God's word. Amen. Because see, sanctification means He's going to separate you. He's going to set you apart. Amen. But I remember praying, God, give me the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Give me the baptism of the Holy Ghost. God, I want it. All of a sudden, there was a light that shined inside of me that I could not explain to you. I was on my knees, bound at the altar, and it raised me straight up and laid me back in the floor. There was a light greater than I've ever seen in my life. Amen. And used to. I don't see it anymore, Brother John. Used to. When I feel that anointing coming upon my life, I would see that light. Amen. But my God, listen. That wasn't all of it. I began to pray, God, I still want the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And one night, one Tuesday night, and I'll be church of God. Amen. I come in on the second song and I said in the next to last scene in the back. And when they begin to sing the song, the, the bigger church of this, the last thing, the, the next thing I remember two and a half hours later, I was up with my head against a double door over here. Amen. I didn't know what to take a place, but I know I woke up speaking in another tongue as the Spirit of God gave me the other. I want you to know something tonight. Amen. My God, we need our accent back in the church. We need the accent back upon the, the anointed of God back in, in the in the cues again. Amen. We gotta quit settling for second place church. We gotta quit settling for second best. We got to quit saying, oh well, that's just the way things are. Now they're like that because that we've lost our accent. Come on. Amen. They're like that. When a cripple walks in and walks out of a cripple, they're like that because we don't have our accent. Come on. Amen. We might have it on, but we don't have it situate in the right way that we can wield it with force and power. When a sick person walks in, when somebody that's possessed walks in, Sometimes, Brother John, we pray for hours to get rid of a possessed demon, a demon that's in a possessed person. If we had our axe head on right, we could do like Wigglesworth. The Bible says, or the, the, his, the book he put out said that 
They called him to a house to pray for somebody that was demon possessed. When he walked in the door, I think it was a woman. When he walked in the door, she cursed him. She called him everything. She ran in and she raved. And she said, in the name of Jesus, get out of her. She kept cussing. She said, kept going on, kept going on. He didn't even tell the second time. He went to walk on the door and she fell in the door and he turned around. And he said, I said, get out. And he walked off and left and it left. Amen. Amen. We want to pray and we want to pray and we want to know it and we want to shout and we want to beat it. Why? Because our accent is not in place. Amen. We, we got our accent where it needs to be. Amen. I'm here to tell you. Speak the word, the Bible said. Amen. Speak the word only. Amen. I, I got somebody needs to help this preacher a little bit tonight. I feel like preaching a little bit. Amen. We got to know that it was a spoken word that created this world. And it is a spoken word inside the anointing of God that will change men and women's lives. Yeah. My God, and my God, God had so many times in divers manner spoken the time past to the prophets by the Father, and in these last days spoken to us by His Son, whom He had put an heir of all things, by whom also He made the world. He be the brightness of His glory, and the express of His person, after, after He had created all things. Amen. All things, why? By the spoken word, the rainbow word was spoken. Amen. Creative power, the driving force that causes things to change, causes trees to fall, causes demons to run screaming and afraid. Amen. Where's your accent tonight? Where is it? Where is it? Very deep, most of ours, very deep. Down at that spot in Jordan, it was a deep, murky, muddy spot. He couldn't look at the bottom and see where it was. But by faith, he cut a tree. He cut a limb. And he threw it on the top of the water. And that tree or that limb summoned that accident or that power. My God. Somebody needs to rest back tonight. It's the tree that summons the power of God for you. Jesus says, when I go away, I'll pray to the Father. He'll give you another comforter, one that will abide with you forever. You shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the outer parts of the world. When we read of the disciples and the apostles of God, a shadow of Peter passing by. He goes. My God. And his accent on. My God. Raised to the dead. Speaking deliverance. Seeing great things take place. Why? And your accent on. Why don't the church do it today? Make a right. Stay with me.